Hello everyone, in this video I am going to talk about split data control in Microsoft Azure Machine Learning Studio. I have my data set and necessary module ready over here for which you can watch previous video tutorials. So as the name indicates, split data control is used to split the data into parts. By default, split data control will divide the input into two equal parts. These two distinct sets will be used as training and testing sets. Now let's get split data control on canvas. Go to the left pane and expand data transformation tab. In that, look for sample and split and expand that tab. There is a split data control. Drag this control on the canvas. Now I will join the output of previous module to the input port of split data so that split data module can access the data set. Now let's look at the properties pane of split data. So let's look at the splitting mode parameter. It has four options which are split rows, recommender split, regular expression, relative expression. Let's look at each of them one by one. The first option is split rows. This option divides source data into two equal and distinct data sets. However, you can also specify the percentage of data to be divided into each set. This can be achieved by modifying entry in the next row, which is fraction of rows in the first data set. The ratio should be a number between 0 to 1 which indicates percentage of rows present in the first output data set. For example, if you type 0.6, then data set would split into 60 as to 40 proportion with 60% of the rows will be sent to the first output data set and 40% will be sent to the other output data set of split data control. Then. There are two options to perform the split, which are randomized split and stratified split. So let's see what randomized split is. This method is used when you don't want to preserve any order of the data. It is useful when you have discrete data and you want similar data in training as well as test data sets. Generally, this option is preferred when splitting data set into training and test data sets. If you want to perform randomized split, then check the checkbox in front of it. Below that, you have an option to mention random seed, which is a numeric value. So if you want to perform randomized split, then you have to mention random seed value. So let's see what is random seed. Random seed is used to indicate pseudo random sequence of instances to be used. In simple words, if you want to repeat the results of a split operation, you should specify a seed for the random number generator. If you mention zero in this field, then seed value is generated by using system clock. As a result, split operation will give slightly different output every time you run the module. Now let's look at the other option that is stratified split. In this, you select a target column for which you want results to be assigned equally among the two resulting datasets. If you set this option to true, then both the output dataset will have the strata column. You can select which column has the values to stratify on or simply group on. If your column has too many unique values, then this functionality won't work for that. In stratified sampling, the data is divided in such a way that a percentage of each target column value is put in each output data set. The working is somewhat similar to group by query in SQL. For example, you might want your data set to be balanced by age, income, or gender, etc. To select a column for a stratified split, an option is given below, stratification key column. This option will contain the name of the column to perform stratification split by. Click on the launch column selector to choose the column. To learn how to use launch column selector, please watch video tutorial on select column in dataset control. 
Now let's run the experiment and visualize the output. We have finished running the experiment and let's see the output of dataset 1. We have used MEC column as the stratification column and as you can see the output is organized by using MEC column. This is the output of dataset 2 and as you can see this output is organized by using MEC column. Generally, it is advisable to select randomized split to produce unbiased results. So let's take an example of that. Let's put 0.8 in fraction of rows in the first output dataset field, which will divide the dataset into two parts, one containing 80% of the dataset and another part contains 20% of the entire dataset. We have checked the randomized split checkbox and mentioned random C as zero and stratified split to false. And now let's run the experiment. We have finished running the experiment and let's visualize the data on both the output ports of split data control. This is the output of dataset one. There are eight columns and 164 rows and the data is randomized. This is the output of dataset two. We will use this data set as test data set. It has 41 rows, 8 columns and the data is randomized. Now let's see the other splitting mode option which is regular expression. Here you have to type a regular expression. When regular expression is executed on data set, the data set will be divided into two parts. The first data set will have the rows with values that match the regular expression and the second data set will contain all the remaining rows. It can also be applied to specific columns in data set. For example, let's write a regular expression for separating data set based on a column name make. So the first data set will contain all the rows where the make column begins with one of these characters that is a b and c and the second data set will contain all the remaining data now let's run the experiment and visualize the output so this is the output of data set one which has 21 rows and eight columns and make column has all the entries starting with a b and c this is the output of data set two which contains 184 rows, eight columns, and has all the remaining data. Now let's look at the other splitting mode, which is relative expression. Here we have to type an expression that performs a mathematical comparison. When a relative expression is executed on dataset, the dataset will be divided into two parts. The first part will contain rows with values that match the relative expression and the second will contain all the remaining rows. It can also be applied to specific column in data set, but there are some restrictions when using relative expression to split data set, which are as follows. First is columns must be numeric. Date time data type is also supported. Second is it can reference a maximum of one column name. Third is you can use all the relational operators in this area. Fourth is, you cannot use a pair of parentheses to group operations. For example, let's divide the data set by price of cars. We will write a relative expression that will divide data set into two parts. The first part will have all the cars whose price is less than 7,000 bucks. The second part will contain all the remaining data. Let's run the experiment and after that we can visualize if the results matches with the relative expression or not. Here is the result for dataset 1 which has 36 rows and 8 columns and the price column has all the entries less than 7000. This is the output of dataset 2 which has 169 rows, 8 columns and in price column all the entries are greater than 7000. Now let's look at the last splitting mode, which is recommender split. 
recommender split is used when splitting or preparing data for recommendation model. If you split data for recommendation model, it will return two data sets, a training set and test set. If the input data contains any extra data, per instance, such as ratings or price, then it is preserved in the output for prediction. There are eight options that can be applied on datasets simultaneously, which are as follows. The first one is fraction of training only users, which indicates the fraction of users that can be assigned only to the training dataset, which means that they can never be used to test the model. Let's put 0.8 in this field which means that for 80% of the users, we will use all the ratings to train the model and we will keep remaining 20% of the ratings for testing purpose. The second option is fraction of test user ratings for training. It indicates a portion of the user ratings that has been collected to be used for training. We will put 0.2 here which means for each user in the test group, we will hold out 20% of that user's rating for training the model. The requested fraction of test user ratings for training is moved to the training set, while the rest is moved to the test set. It ensures that at least one instance is always moved to the training set for each user. Before jumping to the next parameter, let me explain you what cold start is. Cold start is a situation when a recommender system does not have any historical information about user or item and is unable to make any personalized recommendations. Cold start is the worst nightmare of any recommender system researcher. Therefore, we want to avoid such data. Now let's go to the third option, which is fraction of cold users. These type of users has not been previously encountered. The system has less information on these users, even if they might be valuable for training, but predictions might be less accurate. We will put zero in this field as we want our results to be more accurate. Now let's move to the next option, which is fraction of cold items. These type of items has not been previously encountered. The system has less information on these type of items even if they might be valuable for training, but predictions might be less accurate. And we will put zero in this field as well because we want our results to be more accurate. Further, we have fraction of ignored users. Recommender splitter can ignore some users, which enables you to train model on a subset of data. This might be helpful in performance reasons. In this field, you can mention the percentage of ignored users. As for now, we will train the model on full data set, so put zero in here. Next is fraction of ignored items. Recommender splitter can ignore some items, which enables you to train model on a subset of data. This might be helpful in performance reasons. In this field, you can mention the percentage of ignored items. Same as ignored users, we will train the model on full data set, so put zero in here. The next option is remove occasionally produced cold items. An item is said to be occasionally cold if it is discovered by the test set and it was not explicitly chosen as cold. Such items can be produced after performing step four, fraction of cold items, and step six, fraction of ignored items in recommender splitter. This option can be used to keep requested number of cold users and items set to zero. This ensures that all the entities in test set are included in training set. So let's check the checkbox. The last option is random seed for recommender. By default, the input data will be randomly split every time. But if you want the same data every time you run split data model, then you have to specify a seed value in this field. Let's put zero in here as we don't want the data set to be exactly same every time. Now we will run the experiment and visualize the output. This is the output of data set one, which has these many rows and three columns. 
this is the output of data set 2 which has these many rows and three columns. This is how we can use split data control to split the data into training set and test set. Thank you.